This is a short presentation on the most common cancers of the lung. We're going to be talking about the most common carcinomas that originate in the lung parenchyma. It's important to differentiate between these and metastases that spread the lung. Uh, the lung is a very common place for metastases to deposit, but these four are cancers that originate in the lung, and we're going to be talking about four of the, of, of the common ones. They're listed across the left here. Uh, before we begin, you can see a picture of how these cancers might be identified um, by a chest x-ray and, of course, by autopsy in the gross pathology specimen shown on the right. For that, we're going to be talking about our squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, large cell undifferentiated carcinoma, and small cell carcinoma. Now, the first three that we have listed here are all considered non-small cell carcinoma. This is, a, this is an older classification of lung cancer. We used to separate lung cancer into small cell carcinoma and non-small cell carcinoma. Then we found that the non-small cell carcinoma variety, uh, was we were actually able to split that into, into smaller categories, into, into smaller subtypes. So those first three are going to be the small cell carcinomas, and uh, they're pretty different in how they spread and, and how aggressive they are compared to small cell carcinoma. And we'll get into that as we talk about them. So let's start with squamous cell carcinoma. This is a disease of smokers. 98% of squamous cell carcinoma instances happen in smokers. It often arises centrally in larger bronchi more than in the peripheral lung. So you're usually going to see this, as we saw in that original chest x-ray on the previous slide, toward the bronchi, toward the middle of the lung, closer to the center. Um, if you only see this on the outside, it likely is not squamous cell carcinoma. This uh, occurs in the bronchi more than in the larynx and trachea, so closer to the lower respiratory tract, because flow becomes turbulent there. As a smoker smokes, the toxins are going to deposit where the airflow is turbulent, and that is going to be as the airflow starts to divide into the bronchi and divide into continually smaller sized air passages, and that occurs more in the bronchi than in the larynx and trachea. One big association with squamous cell is hypercalcemia. Now, this tumor usually secretes a parathyroid hormone-like compound, which increases the levels of calcium in the blood. This can, uh, this can cause a variety of symptoms, including, including weakness, dehydration, and altered mental status. And histologically, we might see desmosomes or keratin accumulation under the microscope. Uh, the, this keratin accumulation usually comes in the form of keratin pearls, as you can see on that image on the right there. I'm going to try to point to it here. This is a keratin pearl, an accumulation of keratin uh, that, that uh, is pretty characteristic of squamous cell carcinoma. And squamous cell can obstruct airways. It can cause atelectasis. So if you see collapse of a lung, it's not necessarily caused by a pneumothorax. It could be a squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell can invade the lymphatics. And lastly, it can cause clubbing in the, feet, in the fingers. So those are other signs that might point you to squamous cell. Next, we have adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma is the most common of the non-small cells and the most common uh, lung cancer in general. Adenocarcinoma is, the, uh, as I just said, the most common carcinoma in non-smokers, but still the majority of people that have adenocarcinoma are smokers. So you're not going to diagnose a non-smoker with squamous cell carcinoma, or it'd be very rare to diagnose a non-smoker who is not exposed to smoke with squamous cell carcinoma. They might be more likely to have adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma, unlike squamous cell, is more likely to be peripheral than central. Adeno means gland. You might see glands on the histology. Uh, also common to see mucin production. Makes sense. Mucin is produced by the glands, so you might see both of those. There's a triad here that is pretty characteristic. Three symptoms that are characteristic of adenocarcinoma. That is clubbing, long bone swelling, and arthritis. And a specific subtype of adenocarcinoma is called adenocarcinoma in situ. Um, we have the former name there, trying not to use that one, but this one has some special features. It has a lipidic growth pattern. Lipidic means butterfly-like, very gentle. And this is what you see in the bottom histology image here. You see the gentle replacement of the type 1 pneumocytes around the alveoli with the cancer cells. This means that it's not invading the basement membrane. It's not breaking into the interstitium, but rather the adenocarcinoma 
adenocarcinoma is growing around the alveoli like you see in that histology image. Here's a, I'm outlining one of those alveoli now, and you could see that the, the cancer cells are growing around it in a lipidic growth pattern, very characteristic of adenocarcinoma in situ. This can be a solitary nodule or it could be multiple nodules. And if it's multiple nodules, it could be multifocal, it could be bilateral. So really you, you can you can see one, two, those two can be together, they could be far away, they could be in different sides of the lung. Um, can't, can't really predict it based on that. And adenocarcinoma in situ usually presents in the clinic as a cough and shortness of breath. And again, you might or you might not have mucus. Next, we have large cell undifferentiated carcinoma. Not much to know about this one, usually like a miscellaneous category for the non-small cell carcinomas. So cells do have prominent nuclei, they are pretty big. You do not see desmosomes here, you do not see keratin here. Those would be characteristic of squamous cell carcinoma. You do not see mucin staining. That would be characteristic of adenocarcinoma. Um, it is possible to characterize large cell undifferentiated carcinoma based on the genetics, based on a cDNA microarray. We're not going to be talking about that here, but there are kind of classifications that, that kind of go into more detail than what is presented here. And now that those previous three were the non-small cell carcinoma. Now we're going to be talking about small cell carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma, like squamous cell carcinoma, exclusively occurs in smokers has a variety of perineoplastic syndromes that you might see with it. These perineoplastic syndromes mean that they are related to a neoplasm. They're related to a cancer, but not directly affected by the size or the mass of the tumor. So it's kind of like systemic effects that might be caused by uh, having cancer. And we're gonna be talking about a few of those caused by small cell carcinoma. One example is that small cell carcinoma secretes hormones. We might see a release of ACTH, which can cause Cushing syndromes. We might see a release of antidiuretic hormone, which can cause low sodium, a sodium abnormality. Um, and these are just hormones, proteins produced by the small cell carcinoma that have systemic effects throughout the body that are usually kept in balance by the rest of the body, but that balance can be thrown off by the carcinoma. And it can also cause Eaton-Lambert uh, syndrome, which is a neurologic disorder worth looking up, another perineoplastic syndrome. Small cell carcinoma is faster growing than the non-small cell varieties. There's rapid progression, there are early metastases, and when it's presented in the clinic, it's usually at a higher stage than the previous three carcinomas that we talked about. This is an aggressive kind of disease. But on the other hand, it's also highly responsive to chemo and radiation treatment. There are two stages for small cell carcinoma. There's a limited and extensive stage, and you kind of go from the limited stage to the extensive stage based on spreading outside of the hemithorax. Um, if, you, if you get that far, then you're considered extensive stage small cell carcinoma. And a few uh, things looking under the microscope that might help you identify small cell carcinoma are the high nuclear to cytoplasm ratios. These have pretty big nuclei compared to the size of the cells. We also see some frequent mitotic figures. There's a high percentage of cells in division under the microscope. Uh, frequent mitotic figures, you see a lot of mitosis going on. You can kind of see that salt and pepper chromatin in that image that's to the right there. And uh, it's worth noting that although this is called small cell carcinoma and the cells are usually smaller than the, the aforementioned uh, three carcinomas, the cells aren't that small compared to, uh, compared to normal cells, to, compared to, to healthy non-cancerous cells. That's all we have for this presentation. I hope it was a helpful overview of cancers of the lung. Thanks for listening.